Hey, what's up everyone? This is Juan with JLB Media. I have a created a presentation on digital marketing strategy. Who is this for real quick? Let's just talk about it. Uh, if this is good for you, if you are an entrepreneur, whether you're a solopreneur or whether you're part of a team and a small or medium comp medium sized company and you still have some questions and, and some unresolved, uh, questions really about how you should uh, establish your strategy for your marketing plan. And it is important that you have a strategy, but also it is important that you have uh, good tactics on how you're going to implement this strategy. So this is what we're going to talk about it today. And let's kind of roll with it. The first thing is to establish who your customer is, your target customer is, and why. It, it is important that you have a pretty clear idea on who this person is. So it is uh, the tip that I'm going to share right now is to have a buyer persona. A buyer persona is a segment of your customer. It can be, you might have just one segment of a customer. It's a very specific service or product, and you have a pretty clear idea of who is buying this product. And that's it. It's, it doesn't have to get any more complicated than that, uh, but you might have a multiple buyer personas. And, 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 well, it's simply, uh, you have to create that. Uh, it helps to put a name to it. You can call it Rob or John or Juan or Mary and, and then define, you know, what their age is, what their, um, demographic, uh, details are, you know, uh, their level of income, maybe, uh, what they probably you do, uh, as a profession, uh, what things that they're looking to solve, what are their pain points that they have and how you are going to overcome those pain points with your product and service, right? That's what you do. And, and that will help you set you apart also from your competition. You, uh, probably want to establish also are those shoppers, uh, where are they and, and where they spend most of their time, right? Uh, do you, do they, uh, are going to, are they going to uh, consume your product, uh, digitally only, or are they actually going to get a physical product? Uh, where will you find them and will they come to you? Uh, how far will, do they usually are to become a potential customer? If you have a, a, a auto shop, you know, how far are your customers coming? My guess is probably within the, you know, 15, 10, 15, 20 miles, probably tops, probably most of them. If, if not all, if you're a restaurant, probably the, 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 the largest audience that you have and, and your biggest customers are going to come probably within a certain uh, radius. Uh, some are probably going to come from, from further out. If you're just living in a city that is more like a touristic city, but it is going to change, you know, the reason why those customers are coming to your restaurant and why they're visiting, you know, how much they're willing to spend, what kind of product they're, they're looking to buy. If you have a restaurant again, uh, they're probably going to be looking at a different, uh, uh, need to feel as they're on vacation versus when they're going out for lunch in the middle of the day, right? So you need to have a pretty clear idea of who they are and, and, and why is that those are the ideal customers, right? Because they need to bring value to your business, just like you have to uh, make all of these efforts to bring value to their lives and solve something for them. The next thing we want to talk about is how is your business different and better than your competition, right? And it might sound like cliche, but you need to have a a good idea and what is your vision and, and what well, and your mission to begin with and the vision of your business. It doesn't matter if you're a small company. It doesn't have to be like super long and super difficult. That's, that's also very key. You know, like sometimes and when we're going through, through books and, and, and classes and, and all of this, uh, schooling, uh, to, to, to do so many things that we have to do with our business when we are entrepreneurs, uh, so we, we tend to overcomplicate things and, and I'm looking to simplify things, uh, in a manner that they're going to be efficient and effective, but there are some steps that you cannot skip and you can have a simple mission statement. It can be just one paragraph or maybe it can be two paragraphs, uh, but it's important and very clear that you know why you're in business and is, is, yes, every business wants to make money, but that shouldn't be the, the sole reason why you're in business, right? You got to have a passion. You got to have some knowledge. You want to be able to, to improve the world in, in, in a better way. Even if you're selling, uh, you know, cans of food, there's many, many ways where you can actually get involved with your community and do things that nobody else does. And, and that, that makes your community better and hence the world a better place. And if you're a teacher, there's also uh, many ways where you can also help people, uh, you know, learn things and, and become a better version of themselves. So, so there are many ways, right? Uh, even if you're a restaurant, right? Uh, yes, you want to feed people, you want to make money, 
But again, you can deliver an experience around the food that you sell. Yes, the food, your food has to be delicious. It has to be priced right. But also at the same time, you know, what kind of experience does the customer have? And it is important that you, uh, you want to deliver, deliver a good experience for, for your customer. And that I think should be part of your uh, mission. Uh, wanting to to deliver an ex- not a good experience, not a delicious meal, but an exceptional experience, uh, the best meal you can. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's it really varies, uh, but it doesn't have to be too complicated. It's important that you know what your business, and it is important that you also establish why um, you know how you're better than your competition, and it does help to think about you know what your values are as a person. If you're a solopreneur or as a business, if when you go into business or you're working with your partners and, and, and other people, maybe you have already hired other people in your business, uh, but it is very important, very key that you know clearly, you know, with one punchline, you know, what is that one-liness statement, why you are different, because you make the most delicious food, you know, because you make the healthiest food, because you have a, a passion uh, for delivering, you know, uh, you know, classes that are really, uh, you know, value driven that you're actually giving uh, content and beyond what your, uh, you know, your students are learning. If, if you are providing, let's say, uh, uh, classes, right. And, and you make the effort to, to give them a little more. And then if you are actually uh, making yourself available to, to provide them with uh, additional uh, guidance in, and uh, advice uh, past the just giving them one class, then uh, you're giving an additional value, right? So it is important that you understand uh, first, but also that it helps you to articulate the idea of how you are better and how you're different. So then you can use that later on to uh, project that into your marketing strategy uh, on all of on all, during all of these. Uh, journey that uh, your customer or your potential customers are going to to go through to get to that uh, conversion to to be able to to sell them the product that you want to sell them and and for them to be able to solve the problem they're looking to solve what customer actions do you want to drive it is very clear that uh, uh, throughout this uh, customer's journey as i'm going to refer again uh, that the uh, customer has a specific steps that they have to accomplish so then you get them closer to your brand right and what i mean by and we will look at this a little more in detail but we're gonna talk about a concept that is called like a call to action and yes the customers can do a lot of things they can fill out an email uh they can uh give you access to their sms their text uh their their cell phone number so you can text them maybe uh they will follow you on social media and they can do a lot of things, but it can be also very confusing and very overwhelming. It is very important that you have very clear what is that you want these uh, potential customers and then later on your actually converted customers to do uh, throughout this journey. So then uh, there, then you can actually take action upon these uh, different actions that they have taken. So you deliver uh, the, the relevant information or the actual value that the, cost, the consumer is looking for. Okay, so it is important that uh, we establish that. How does digital fit into all of your other customer communication channels? Okay, so here I'm going to talk about mainly digital because we're talking about digital marketing strategy. Uh, but it is, I believe, it's a combination of everything. We're still in a, in a world where we're doing face-to-face interactions. Uh, some businesses, depending on the industry that you are, that may still need and require a flyer or a postcard or some sort of a, a collateral that the customers customers can actually hold and see or view or, you know, uh, but it will be a, a combination, I think, uh, between the digital and the physical space. Now, um, a lot of customers have accelerated this trend where because of the pandemic and because of the uh, influence of technology is having in, in an our day, everyday life, that uh, it's, it's changed and, and they're leaning more towards the uh, digital, uh, you know, consuming digital information. So, so let's, let's dig in a little more, uh, here. Okay. So now we're going to move on into the next part here. And we're going to talk about the marketing funnel, which help us, uh, kind of establish our guides for our strategy and some of the tactics that we want to, to follow and, you know, probably implement. So let's, let's, uh, uh recognize first that this funnel, this marketing funnel, it's, uh, 
uh, when you, if you look around, if you Google it, you're going to find like different ideas as far as, uh, you know, how many layers there are until a customer that discovers you. And, you know, when they start going into the funnel from this awareness uh, portion until they make a purchase or until they become a, a loyal uh, fan or, you know, they, they become an advocate of your business. Uh, it has like different layers. Uh, so today I'm just focusing into this one, uh, that I, that it, it's, uh, broken down into like six different, uh, categories, but I'm actually going to refer them more as four. Why? Because I think it kind of simplifies this process, uh, uh, for the purpose of understanding it better. If, uh, your marketing is not your, you know, your, your forte or, you know, if you're not, you don't think you're a good marketer anyways, which, uh, you know, it's a skill that you can develop and, 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 and that's why, you know, but so like on, on one side here, I have laid out like, you know, some of the business goals around each one of these, uh, uh, funnels as they go into the funnel, right? You want customers to, to, well, potential customers to first discover who you are. And that's kind of the awareness stage. And, and you have different specific actions that you can take. And those are the tactics to be able to accomplish our business goals throughout this strategy. And, and then from there, you know, you're going to get more people on into like the wider part of the funnel. And then some people will make it through the next, uh, stage of the funnel and, and so on. And well, some, some people will just drop out, you know, for some reason, you know, and not everybody's going to be a, a customer or a client and not everybody's going to purchase from you. Uh, but the more people you get in, and, and the better work you do throughout each stage of the funnel is going to help you get them closer to that end goal, which is to, uh, be able to close a sale. Okay. And so the, the first goal, it definitely, f uh, first and foremost here at this point, it will be to, uh, you want more people to know about your business, right? If you're a brand new, a brand new business, uh, where nobody really knows about you, you know, you gotta use everything uh, that is at your disposal, at your disposal. Uh, one of these uh, strategies or one of these tactics uh, for this strategy is to use uh, the search and the paid ads. And we're gonna see a little more detail on this, but that's kind of the, the water part of the funnel, the top part of the funnel. You want people to know about you and you can accomplish this in different ways and we'll see a little bit more about that. Like, so from there, the next part is uh, what is called like the consideration and preference. You know, once people get to know about you, that you exist in the world, right? Because if they don't know you exist, they don't know you have a website, they don't know you have, um, you know, uh, you're, you have a Facebook group or they don't know that you have, you know, an email list, for instance, they don't know it exists. Uh, they're not going to get a chance to get closer to you, to discover more about you, to, to, they won't give you a chance even to let you, to let you explain to them, you know, what is that you do? What bring, what value you're bringing to their life? What problem are you solving for them? What pain point are you actually taking care? You see? So it's all connected. So the first part is you want them to know about you and that you exist. And you have specific tactics such as like, you know, being able to be found online. Uh, if we're talking on the, on the yes, uh, digital space and you use also tactics such, such as having like paid ads, whether on social or on, on search engines and etc. Okay. And the next part is once they have, uh, discovered you, you want to get them a little closer. You want to give them something so they can get interested about you and your business and, and how is that you actually accomplish this value proposition, this promise of solving whatever this problem is that you do solve for them. Right. And so, so the goal is that you want more people to check out your business, right? You want more people to know about what you do. And the, one of the ideal places for this is a website because on a website, you can control the conversation and a little more of the elements and how you want to present this. And so there are like different ways, you know, uh, where, where you can accomplish this. It doesn't have to be super complicated, but it's very important that you have a website that accomplishes several things for you. Uh, and that is, uh, designed to, to present the information in a manner that is actually going to benefit you. Uh, and it's also been going to benefit these uh, potential people that they just discovered you and they want to know more about you so they can find the information that is relevant to them. Uh, and, and then you can start getting more like, uh, you know, kind of know each other and, and befriending each other, uh, since they just found out you existed, right? 
And for this, uh, we have an important uh, tactic such as using the, the power of uh, having a website, uh, the power of social media for sure, and the power of email marketing. The next uh, stage in this case, we'll talk about uh, purchase and purchase is basically conversions, you know, like, I mean, you might not have the intention of selling a, a particular product right now, but you maybe, maybe your goal is, is simply to get him into some sort of a, a email list, right? A lead. And, and maybe you can use those leads to produce something else in the next stage of a, maybe a different business that you have, uh, or maybe within the same business, if you are looking to, for instance, you're looking, uh, you're a realtor, right? Or you have a, a, a realtor company and you're selling, uh, you know, commercial property or houses, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, the, 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 this part of the business, uh, is to get people to discover, you know, your company and your properties and what is that you do. And you can do this not particularly through showing them properties and, and telling them, okay, we, you know, we have this, uh, you know, uh, split level house, you know, four bedroom, blah, 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 with this fancy yard and blah, 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 because they are not ready to buy yet. Maybe they're, they're, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody that, uh, it has uh, finished their career. Maybe somebody that is, uh, you know, has got a job that is uh, feeling now that they're more established and they're looking into like the next stage in their life. And they're looking at how they can, you know, uh, grow their wealth or start their wealth uh, personally. Or maybe uh, they're like new couples, newlywed couples, or people that are just looking to, to uh, you know, establish themselves and kind of move into their own space. But they're not quite prepared to buy a house now. So maybe uh, the goal, the end goal is to get him into some sort of a email marketing list, right? In, in some sort of a group. So when they are ready with a different strategy later on, then they can go into your real estate business uh, when they're actually searching for uh, properties, right? So so it really depends on how this journey goes and how how the customer, uh, you know, kind of moves through, through this funnel. You know, uh, I, I guess uh, um, a very common question that a lot of uh, business owners have is, okay, so like, does every customer journey is the same? Do do they all come in as uh, you know in the awareness stage, and then they go into uh, you know this uh, consideration preference? Then they go into purchase. Uh, you know, how does that work? Can can they just come in right away and, and make a purchase? Well, if somebody already talked to them about your business, you know, somebody already did, and they told them, yeah, oh yeah, I bought from them, or you know, like you know this, uh, you know this. Uh, dealer you know this car dealer they are like very honest they give you good deals you know they will take care of you if there is a problem you know they have this uh, uh extended warranty that they offer you and for no charge you know within three days they will just give you you know a return you know and don't charge you anything i don't know you know in particular how far how how it works for every business here but uh but uh, you get the idea is uh um, you know like if somebody's looking to buy a car now and, and they ask their neighbor and the neighbor say, oh yeah, you know, go to, you know, this uh, uh, car dealer is like right there. Even if it takes them, you know, 30 minutes to get there, an hour, two hours, you know, they will probably do it. They're going to spend good money and they're just ready to buy. Okay. So their customer journey will be like different. Um, so it is important to understand that some people will come in, they will drop out. Uh, some people are not ready to buy now. It doesn't mean they're not going to buy ever. Uh, that, that means only that they're not ready to buy now, uh, and maybe they will be able to be a good uh, candidate in the future, maybe, you know, in, in six months, in, in two years, you know, ch life changes and, and needs change, and, and, and you know, it's, it's always a, a kind of like a, a moving target. As long as you have clear, you know, what you offer and who you're looking to serve, and, and you're available, they can contact you, you know, uh, in a... In a uh, effective manner uh, when they need to, you know, then you're winning. Uh, then uh, we're looking at this um, business goal, which is, you know, yes, I want more customers to purchase my products and services. You don't have sales, you don't have a business. If people don't know you exist, they're not going to be able to to close it. You're not going to be able to close any deals. You're not going to be able to sell any products. So it is very important that uh, you can also have the ability to make this purchasing uh, a step, whether it's they're buying a product or a service, uh, as easy as possible. And we'll talk more about it, you know, but again, we're going to touch on, you know, having a website is, is key throughout this process and in the email as well. And then for the last two uh, parts of the funnel here, we're talking about loyalty and advocacy. And 
you know, yeah, their business goal is you want more customers to come back. Hey, you already spend a lot of money. You, you already spend a lot of uh, tears and sweat and a lot of work and hours and money just to get them in to discover who you are. You already, you know, gave them a lot of valuable content. You have already uh, established yourself as, uh, yourself as an authority. You already proved to them that you're the best choice. Uh, they already purchased from you and you deliver an uh, amazing uh, you know, uh, a product and, uh, even a great post service, you know, after that, a warranty and, you know, for anything else, uh, it doesn't even make sense that you want repeated sales from the customers. And doesn't even make sense that you want those customers to do the legwork for you and tell everybody else in their world, in their social media, in their community, in their next door, you know, with everybody they talk at church and, you know, in, in their school and, you know, in their place of work and everything, you know, about how happy and how satisfied about what they just did, you know, this good deal that they got, this great product that is solved, this problem that they didn't know how to otherwise. And and those are going to be your uh, loyal customers, right? You need to do some work here. Uh, those customers are probably going to cost you in a way less because uh, you already acquired them. So your cost of acquisition is, it has to be lower. And, and that means that for every uh, uh, return purchase or every uh, additional purchase, your margins are going to be, your margins are going to be better. So your profitability is going to increase, right? It makes sense. It's just, it's just pure logic here, right? I'm not uh, discovering anything really new, right? Uh, but it's important that you have this strategy in place and that you establish some sort of a, a loyalty program uh, that is going to uh, get people to know that you value them as a as a customer, as a client, that you are having a special place. Um, if they are like the best shoppers that you have, they are spending the most money, uh, they are return business, uh, you know, that you show them that they, they're being value as such. And for your advocacy, right, you want those uh, brand uh Fans, you know, those are brand ambassadors that are going to do all of this work. They're going to talk about you. They're going to, uh, you know, somebody's going to, somebody post something negative. Imagine if, you know, somebody doesn't have a great experience or something on, on social media that you don't even have to defend yourself, let's say. And then a, another customer comes in, chimes in and they say, Oh, you know, I actually had this great experience. I know them personally and, you know, they have always treated me right, blah, 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 you know. So can you imagine that's probably like, Whoa, that's a, like a, like a super experience right there. You as a business owner, but you have to kind of think of these things throughout your entire, uh, marketing strategy and during this, um, customer journey. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Now we're going to be digging a little more into the awareness stage, right? The top of the funnel here, three digital tactics for awareness. Number one, paid social. Number two, Paid search, number three, organic and search in local search. Okay. So yes, as a brand new business, you want to have sales. You need sales. You need to feed, uh, you know, this, uh, whole, uh, uh, 360 uh, degrees, uh, where you actually get sales, right? This, uh, blood, you need to, to, to get the, the, the blood moving in your business. And it is important to get sales, right? Uh, I can talk to you about like how important is, uh, is SEO and have like a blogging or, uh, you know, having a YouTube channel or, you know, having all of these uh, presence where people can discover you like organically without you having to pay, although you're spending money and time and resources to be able to provide all of this. But if you want instant resource, you want to be positioned in front of customers, you know, right when they're motivated, right when they're talking about this, right when they're looking at other products that are similar to yours, what, right when they're looking at, you know, how to solve this problem that they have and all of a sudden, you know, you pop right out there as a, as a quick ad and, and then you tell them, Hey, you know, are you having, you know, let, let's say they're, they're looking at, you know, some, uh, some uh, YouTube video or, you know, something searching on Google where, you know, they're just having uh, like insomnia. They just can't sleep. They're stressed out. They're just not eating the right thing. They're just having a hard time because of what are raising their kids, you know, personal work, you know, they're just, just can't sleep. You know, life is just all crazy. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, a, a, an ad pops out there, a little video pops out there and says, you know, uh, are you having trouble sleeping? Are you looking uh, for a solution on how you can, you know, re re uh, regain your you know, your health, your sanity, uh, 
be full of energy and start tackling every day, you know, your problems with, you know, with strength, with, you know, awareness and, and, and all of that. And, and all of a sudden, whoa, what happened? They just talked to me, right? If you, you get them to do that, uh, they might be like, hmm, I got to check them out, right? Um, and I'm not talking about like clickbait. I'm talking about like, you know, we can help you. You know, we can, uh, you can schedule a consultation. You can, uh, download, you know, uh, a quick guide on, you know, how to eat better so you can sleep better. Uh, we can, we can talk about, um, you know, enter this, um, uh, given as your email, right? That can be the call to action. So, so we'll send you right away, uh, information and, and how you can, uh, start balancing, I don't know, your everyday, you know, in five steps and 10 steps, right? Uh, in an easy way for them, right? They don't have to do anything. They don't have to pay anything at this point. All they have to do is just maybe give you their email or, or actually click and, and go to your website to learn more about you, you know, at that point, right? So, so you're talking about building awareness and it's just kind of letting people know you exist. You're trying to reach more followers, right? Uh, potential followers that are hopefully qualified. Right. And, and social media is great. Same as, uh, uh, Google ads, Google ads, um, you know, and, and other platforms that allow you to do, uh, paid ads because, uh, it allows you to segment. Now, there might be some changes that are coming up because we know that, uh, these, uh, the cookies, which are like these little breadcrumbs, little files that are being dropped at each computer. So then there's like a little tracker out there of, you know, what places you visited and when you visited the last time and what, you know, what, what areas did you click, you know, and things like that just to help you, uh, provide, to, to, to provide you a better experience when you come back. Right. Um, it's, it's changing. So we're talking about maybe like one, two years where, uh, you know, privacy requirements are, are changing, but uh, we're not going to dig into that too much right now. I don't think it's that important, but these tools, one way or another, uh, and it's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing, allow you, uh, to segment your, your customers, right? Based on, you know, those demographics or psychographics, you know, uh, you know, where they live, you know, and uh, what, what have they done recently? You know, whether it's like they just got married, they just went on a trip. They, uh, they just bought a house. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's like a ton of different, um, classifications, how you can actually segment customers, uh, for, you know, whatever reason that you need. Uh, and, and, and that helps you get like more qualified leads or at least, uh, uh, initial audience. So, so you're not spending money, uh, into, you know, like getting people that are not interested into your product, that they're not your, you know, particular uh, ideal uh, consumer to, you know, to do anything more with them, really. Uh, it just takes time. It's costing you money and, and, and they're not bringing any, any value, any additional value to you. Right. So, so it is important that you are starting in, you, you get in alignment with, you know, your buyer personas, like who your customer are, your customers are, and you know, what your mission is. What is your value proposition? Your one less, uh, uh, statement and, and, you know, what sets you apart from the rest and building awareness uh, also, you know, helps you to target that ideal, uh, audience with more precision. It helps you also achieve your business uh, goals faster because then all of a sudden you're, you're bringing into the funnel, you know, people that somewhat are interested into what you have to offer. Right. So, so if you have products for like children, uh, and they don't have any children, you know, is there any value to bring them in right now? You know, probably later on the, down the road, maybe they have children. But right now, if they're not interested, maybe they're single, maybe uh, their kids are, their kids are grown up and they're empty nesters now. Do they have anything to do with your business? Probably not. Okay. So it all depends really how uh, you, you uh, take a perspective into this, uh, but it does help you speed things up. So that's why pay social and pay search, it can help you get there a little faster. Uh, but you gotta invest, you know, uh, not only uh, money, but uh, also have a good uh, copyright on, you know, your ads. They have to be planned out well. They have to be consistent. Um, you have to to define, you know, really clear who you wanna, what you wanna be talking to, and 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 again, uh, it is important that at this point, uh, you know, you know where they're spending their time, right? If if they're t if they're spending most of the time in in Instagram. Uh, you know, that's it, that's it, uh, pay for you to, to be spending money on like YouTube ads or like in TikTok ads when they're spending most of their time on, 
you know, in Facebook. So you should have an idea where they're at. If you don't know, then you got to ask your friends, you know, friends are your friends. And, and there are many ways to get this information. It does take some work, but it's with sole purpose of uh, getting, you know, better qualifying potential customers, uh, a better audience for, for what you have to offer. And, and you have to, to make sure also that, you know, people can find you. Like if you have a, a business that it, it's mainly for like local patrons, right? They, uh, you have a, a coffee shop, you have a local, I don't know, local, a bank, uh, local branch, you know, in, in, a, in a suburb or, you know, uh, again, like a car dealer, a restaurant, you know, uh, you have a, I don't know, like a cell phone repair business, you know, really anything that you might have, an, an electric business, a construction business or anything really that it has a, a, a local presence, you want people to find you, right? And and you got to leverage tools that are out there, not only your website, but also, uh, let's say, Google My Business. You know, that's a free tool that not everybody uses, that everybody should be on right now. And we'll talk more about that. That's actually one of the uh, five must-haves that I uh, recommend to my clients because it's like a no-brainer, right? Uh, you got to use it. It's out there for a reason. And... It's also important that, whoop, sorry, okay, and then it's also important that you develop a consistent and an effective messaging and creative, right? You gotta have, you know, uh, your your whole branding uh, package ready. Uh, you don't wanna have a, a presence that is confusing. You don't wanna have uh, letters that are hard, fonts that are hard to read. Uh, believe it or not, uh, there are some technicalities such as like picking the right phone to to, to have your message delivered in a compelling and consistent way. Not only that is the same uh, type font that, uh, that it's, it's out there that you like, but it, that is actually, you know, every single one of those have a particular purpose, uh, and, and they convey a message other than what customer are actually part, probably reading or seeing on a headline, right? And, and the message has to be catered in a way that if they visit you at your shop, if they see your ad on the newspaper because you're still using newspaper, if you're more like the gorilla type and you're actually doing like marketing uh, and you're teaming up with other, you know, with your local hair salon and other places and you're actually, you know, uh, creating promotions together via like particular flyers, you know, or something like that that is not very expensive to do anyways, uh, you want to have a message that is consistent across. And then if they go to your website, they, they, they uh, scan your QR code or they actually go to your website and they find you there. Or if they go to your social media out there, you know, like it's gotta feel something very consistent. Uh, the message is not exactly going to be the same, but it's better if it's consistent all across your platforms and, and whatever they're, they're looking for you. And again, uh, the next thing is that not only that you have to be consistent, but you have to make it easy for this uh, good, you know, person that is actually wanting to get to know you, right? If, if they want to know how, you know, what you do, and then they decide, you know, I want to book a, an appointment right now. I want to make a consultation. I want to, you know, set up an appointment so I can actually go and, and, you know, take care of my teeth or, or I want to talk to them right now and, and see if I can do like a Zoom call or if I can actually bring my car to their shop or if I can book a table so I can have my party there for my birthday or for my mom's birthday. You know, whatever the reason might be, it is important that uh, you have a, a clear way for them to n not only know what they need to do to, to get to that point, but also to find uh, relevant information. You know, like if they got to have an email, well, it's got to be there somewhere and it's got to be easy to be found. If uh, you, they want to, they, they need to fill out a contact form that is identifiable, you know, that it has a button that they can actually tell, oh yeah, this is a clickable button if they're on their website. If you want them to, to do a particular action, it has to be easy for them to communicate. If, if they want to talk to you on the phone and, and you still do most of your business through the phone, which is still very valid, you know, I mean, you got to go whatever works for you and whatever works actually for your customers, right? If they prefer to talk to you to convert, if they prefer, if, if it's, if they prefer to come to you, uh, before they make a decision to convert, well, you got to make it work for them, right? And, and in this case, you know, if you visit websites, Sometimes it's just frustrating. It's hard because you can't find who you call, who you talk to, uh, you know, where you even click. And, or sometimes it takes like you have to click like three, four times just to get to like a contact form to to get a problem resolved or to get an answer, uh, a question answered. 
So it, it shouldn't be that hard. You know, it's kind of part of the, the experience. And, and then uh, it is important that during this uh, awareness stage that uh, this, um, that you put yourself out there with, uh, you know, with intention of establishing yourself as, you know, as an expert in that field or that uh, you're making yourself available so people have questions that they can find you in a way that is sustainable and that is manageable for you. Um, and, you know, at the same time that uh, you can uh, create a conversation and answer questions. So then that leaks into the, like the next step. And the next step, as we discussed, is being able to uh, engage with you. And so the moment they have discovered you exist and the awareness, then we move into the next portion of the funnel. And this is the engagement. So the big three digital tactics for engagement, number one is the user experience, uh, UX, and we're going to include also the user interface. Okay. So some people talk about them as they're the same. Uh, they actually do take care of different things, but regardless, what is important is that whoever gets to, to get in contact with you in, in the digital space, is that uh, they have a good experience that is enjoyable, that is interesting, that is inf informative, right? That, that the content, it, it, it gives them some sort of value and they, they can actually act. So then that they know what is that they need to do. What are you trying to do with that um, uh, step, right? So like if you send an email, okay, what is the ultimate email? It's like, call me, book an appointment, purchase this product, buy now, you download the app, uh, come in, you know, if you're, you have a sale, well, you got to tell them, okay, come in this day, you know, so you can get, get a buy and get one free or, you know, whatever the, the, uh, the deal is that you're offering. And it is important too that, uh, they got you, you have other, uh, efforts as well. So, uh, not only your, your website experience that is, uh, outstanding and, and that is very fully functional, but it's also that, uh, they can find you, you know, organically on social media, you know, like, uh, for instance, um, I was listening to, to one story about uh, somebody that is a, a sleep coach and, and what she did is, uh, at the beginning of her uh, career, she wanted to establish herself as a sleep coach and she won, she was part of these, uh, different groups on social media around her community where she met a lot of the people that was there, you know, uh, through, through social media. And, and she was listening to these conversations in a way that if somebody, you know, happened to be having a discussion about or around, you know, like a sleep disorder or having issues sleeping, you know, and, and different problems. Uh, I think this was all like a group for moms and things like that. Uh, they, um, uh, they will chime in and they will just give like free advice, you know, just like for free. And, and they were, uh, looking to, to build this, up uh, uh, as an authority and as somebody that, uh, was kind of nice and really didn't asking for anything in return. You know, at some point as, uh, more people, uh, started tagging her for, you know, once they saw conversations and they knew that she was kind of somebody that knew about it and, and that was more, uh, 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 was more like the professional aspect of, uh, uh, you know, sleep consulting, uh, they would start tagging her. And, and when she built enough of an audience and enough of an authority within that field, then she opened up like consultations for a charge, you know, for a fee. So, you know, there are like ways where you can actually, once you get discovered, you want to get people to come in and it's like you open up a shop. Okay. They drive down the, the street and they see you have a, they have a little shop out there with a nice light and the doors open, you know, and maybe uh, let's say you have a donut shop, right? And a coffee shop out there and they see it. Okay. The next thing you want is you wanted to come in. You wanted to, to not only know that you're there, but you wanted to get into the door. And then when you get them into the door, what do you want next? Well, you want to try your products. Then you're probably doing sampling. You gotta, you, you wanted to try like this, uh, I don't know, strawberry donut and this like chocolate and this like sugar donut. And you wanted to try your espresso and you wanted to try this and this and that. Um, right. I mean, there are limitations as far as what you can do for free, but you can certainly have a, uh, specific efforts for getting people to try it. Right. So how would you, uh, use, uh, uh, in, uh, as an analogy with this example, and how would you put this into the context of your business? How will you get people to walk into the, the door of your business? Let's say you have a, uh, a product that is a digital product. It's a service. You know, how will you get them in to try it? Like if you are uh, teaching a course, well, maybe you're giving the free lesson 
free, the first free lesson, you know, and then the second one and so forth. Okay, they already tried it a little bit. You know, I mean, there's like this uh, uh, freebie model where, you know, you get people a little bit of the first one, you know, a, a little bit to try so that they can taste it. They can enjoy it. They know it's good. And, you know, they're like ready to move into like the next stage of the um, the final, which we'll talk later. Right. But it is important that uh, during this time you're looking to increase your engagement and then you're looking to to gain people uh, trust and, and to position yourself as an expert or to to position your product as the best product. Again, how are you solving people's uh, pain points? Right people's problems with your product or service or how are you enhancing you know their experiences they want to experience something amazing okay there are like a lot of great businesses out there what makes you different and how what is your value proposition what is your promise to them um, how are you getting closer to that promise so then they're in alignment with what they're looking for and what you're offering so then they align and they're ready to move into the next stage right so your goal number one during this engagement is build traffic in your website, right? And it is important here to to make a, a, a good website. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have a business and you can just write it on, say, Facebook. You don't need anything else. You don't need Instagram, YouTube. You don't need to do videos there. You don't need to have a website, right? But let's say tomorrow, uh, Facebook comes up with a new pay plan and all of a sudden, all of these business pages now cost money, right? And if you are not willing to pay for that, they will shut it down. Let's say that changes, right? Or if they start monetizing you in a different way where you're not in agreement with, are you going to risk your community? Are you going to risk like having everybody there and not having somewhere else to go? So I think social media is um, a great uh, way to bring traffic to your website to get people closer to your brand, but it shouldn't be where your brand is, is, is uh, present all the time and only. I think um, you want to have a website where you always control the conversation. It's always yours. Uh, nobody dictates the rules there except you. And you have control of the information. So there are some platforms out there that, you know, offer services um, where you can buy, let's say, I don't know, uh, build marketing campaigns, but you never get to own the data. You segment the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, parameters, let's say, uh, the characteristics for, for like this, uh, potential customers. And, and then you send, uh, an email or you send, you present an ad in front of them to convert and that would probably work great, but you never get, uh, you know, like this in that insights, um, about who these customers are. And, and, and there's so much value to it because you can do so many things with it. And I'm not talking about spamming, but I'm talking about like getting them even closer, uh, at a more intimate level with your brand, with your business. Okay. And then I'm talking about being able to create, um, dripping campaigns where, uh, you know, once somebody signs into your email list, well, you own the email list, you're going to respect that. And, and, and you have that the customers, uh, the customers have to know that you respect them. Uh, that you're professionally with your, you're professional with your business and how you treat their, their, their email and, and the data that they provide to you. But at the same time, uh, you're going to start introducing them to your brand. And one day you email them with like who you are and what you offer. The next time you show them a little bit behind the scenes and how you're packaging items, you know, maybe, uh, how you're receiving this or how you're like, I don't know, how you're brewing coffee behind the scenes to kind of get them into like this experience and then all, all they feel that, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're sharing with me all of this stuff. And, and, and then they feel like they, they start liking you more and getting you closer and getting closer and getting closer to that point of, of the sale. Okay. So going back to the website here, you know, very important points. You can read them all as well here, but it's, it's very important that your website is well designed and functional. Okay. You don't want to have just a website that is just web, any website, right? It's got to be visually appealing. Uh, it's got to uh, consider, you know, what is your brand tone? You know, your voice, uh, your look, you know, the fonts, you know, the, 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 the titles, the headers, you know, just like imagine how you want to experience a website when you go to your favorite website. Let's say you have a hobby, right? You have a business, but you also have a hobby and your hobby is, I don't know, a gardening. So, so what, just imagine, okay, where are you going? Why do you go to that place that you go to learn more about planting and, and, you know, like the seasons and, 
you know, how to accomplish certain things for your garden, how to make it better, prettier, how you protect more your plants and, and that. I mean, there's like many, many places that give you like tons of information in a speci specific format uh, that are very appealing to the eye, right? Uh, they sound good. They, um, they have good images. They have good pictures. Uh, they have valuable content and valuable information. Uh, they, uh, they look good, right? We associate pretty with, with quality, right? It doesn't mean it, this is true, uh, that you have a, a website that is pretty. It probably has no value on the, the content and the information that it shows you. But I mean, the, the humans, we humans, uh, connect quality, visual, uh, quality, right? Something pretty with something that is, uh, of good value or, that it has quality, right? So again, we're talking about within this uh, framework of uh, delivering something that is uh, beautiful, beautifully designed, but it's functional, you know, it is well designed, that is visually appealing, that it works um, uh, quick, that it as expected, that it does its job, that it has no broken links, that you don't click somewhere and all of a sudden, oh, you know, this this link doesn't exist, right? How, how many times does that happen? How frustrating is that, right? If it's frustrating for us, how can, how do we expect that it's not uh, frustrating for, for our potential uh, customers or clients, right? We got to do what we need to do to, to take care, good, good care of them and provide them a good ex user experience. It's got to be use, easy to use. It's got to be intuitive, right? Usually like a website on the left upper corner will have their logo. And then on the other side, you'll probably have like the menu on the top to the, to the most important uh, options. If you need to have a login option in there. Also, uh, it has to be visible, you know, and if it's more like a mobile environment, then you'll probably have like a sandwich menu that will be either line, it will be sitting in the middle or it will be sitting on the right. Some sites, they put them backwards, but then all of a sudden it's like nobody knows what to do, right? Some buttons don't look like they're buttons. Uh, I don't know. People think that, okay, well, it's a picture. You're supposed to click it. How do the customers know if, if, if nothing makes it look different? It doesn't pop. It doesn't have a different color. It's got to have some sort of um, a standard. It's got to follow certain standards for usability. It's got it's to be in, in, uh, intuitive for, for consumers to use so you don't have to teach them, right? And it's got to get the job done. And it's got to get the job done uh, quickly because nobody has time anymore. It's got to be uh, a good website. It needs to be optimized for, for search. So you can work on your improving your SEO, which is... Um, being discovered organically on, say, the major uh, search engines. So we're talking about Google here for the most part. Uh, but uh, it, it takes time, but it's got to be ready. So you can work on it kind of in the long run uh, as a marketer or do marketing for your business. Uh, it's got to have clear call to action so people know what to do. Okay, uh, some some sites are like super overwhelming. They have like uh, a lot of resources, menus, pictures, groups, Social media feed here and, you know, I mean, a ton of information is great, but does it need to be all in there? Does it need to be all kind of shovel in, f in front of the, uh, the visitor's face? All of a sudden they don't know what to do. It's like paralysis. It's like you go to store to buy for a kind of, uh, kind of soup and all of a sudden, uh, chicken soup. And then also you see like 20 brands in, in the same soup in eight different sizes, right? Uh, you're looking uh, to buy, I don't know, like some uh, blue jeans. And unless you know exactly what you're looking to buy, and if you're not sure, you want just a blue jean and your size, and you go to these uh, huge stores, and they have like racks and racks full of different, I don't know, size. Sometimes uh, some, some consumers, they enjoy digging through everything. Uh, some people, they don't. They get overwhelmed. It turns them off. It makes, it pushes them away. Okay. So it's got to be organized. So that's why you need to, to work with a professional on that. And it's got to include, you know, keywords, what customers are looking for, what people are searching for to solve whatever problems that they have. So you can present, you know, a good solution that is relevant to them. Um, but it's got to be designed to help people not to, to improve your SEO. And of course, everybody's using mobile uh, every time, everywhere, even to sleep even to, to do anything. And it's gotta be important. It's, it's important that you have your website ready to deliver a good experience in a mobile device.
So that is designed to be in a mobile platform. How are we doing out there? We are at about 50 minutes and we're almost done here. I want to wrap things up by the, the hour. So we got only about uh, 10 more minutes now, nine or 10 minutes to go. So the big three tactics now for doing the purchase and conversion stage. And I added not only purchase, but a conversion because as I explained earlier, your end goal for your marketing uh, strategy might not be a purchase, but it might be to sign up to a list. And later on, you can monetize that in a, dif that in a different way. Okay. So having said that, number one, again, user experience, uh, user interface. It's got to be a good user in experience and interface. You know, what information is being asked to complete, to complete a purchase? Uh, do, is it all in one page or in two pages? We can, we can talk like for, for an hour just about this, uh, area here, but it's important that you, my suggestion is that you talk to a professional that's done it before that, uh, understands how a customer's, uh, journey is even during the, the, the most important time when they're about to convert. And if they're ordering online, there's got to, there's a, like a million reasons why they walk away from a page where they already put items in a cart and they just click away. Right. So you need to have a strategy in, in a tactic to be able to deliver the best experience during this important moment of the consumer's journey. It's got to be easy for them to know what's expected. They have to have in front of them what they need to fill out. If it takes them to more than one page, they're probably not going to click. Or once they're done through the first page and they see, oh, now I got to click the second page. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they got a cold feet. They got a, they start second guessing and they're like, maybe I, sh maybe I'll, I'll look at this next, next week. And they were just like ready to buy. And you're losing somebody just because they did not have a good experience. Emails and SMS. There are ways that you can deliver in a, an awesome experience once the consumer has a finalized a purchase. And it's like, for instance, providing them with a thank you note. Here's what you just purchased and we're working on it. You know, once you move that order into another status, let's say, um, the order is being a package and it's being, uh, shipped. It's great for me as a consumer to know, oh, I know what my order is. And if you see these uh, great experiences, when you're looking at what Target is doing, when you're looking at what Walmart is doing, when you look at what Amazon is doing, if you have not purchased from them, I invite you to go and buy something. I don't care what, just buy something that you need. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but throughout their journey, they're going to try to make it as easy. They have like a one click purchase button. So the first time they gather your information, like the second time, you can just buy one item out of the list and say, I want to buy this scent. That's it. They don't need anything else. Why they do it? They pour a ton of money into this research and, and they have gotten good results. And don't forget about offers and discounts. Uh, the, the, mo the, the time when you disclose offers and discounts, well, it is important. It can be tricky. Uh, but again, uh, talking to professional can help you. If you have an e-commerce store, for instance, you know, or even if they're looking to book an appointment with you, you know, you're using a, a solution that it allows them to, to book, uh, you know, a slot into your calendar and pay for, for that consultation in advance. So then you don't have to send an invoice later and, you know, see who owes you or who hasn't paid you yet, you know, and, and send another email. It can make it so much more efficient, deliver a better experience for you so you can do more valuable things with your time for your business because you got to do, you know, wear all of these 20 different hats. But at the same time, um, it can be a, a better experience for the consumer if they know in advance, oh, you know, there's going to be a sale between this time and that time. You know, we're going to have this special uh, if you book now within the next 24 hours. Right. So then they, they have it clear. They know what they need to do. Again, they have a good experience. And, and don't forget, you got to share those, um, uh, special uh, pieces of information about your offer, rewards, promotion, whatever it is that you have, uh, and include all the information that, that they need, you know, um, uh, in, in all of these different, uh, 
channels that they have, you know, like if you have a SMS, if they, you have a newsletter, you gotta hit that. It's gotta be on, on your website. If it's an important cell, maybe, maybe a banner is, is the solution. Maybe it's on in a particular product page. You know, I mean, it, it, it works differently for everybody. So don't expect like a one answer, kind of like a cookie cutter that one solution fits all business, even business into the same industries. Maybe businesses don't operate the exact same way. You know, and even if you have a point of sale, a physical point of sale, a physical retail shop, a store, a store within a store, you know, whatever the concept might be, promote there too. Use your tables. You know, if you have a restaurant, use your tables also, you know, uh, use, uh, the walls, uh, use them to your advantage. You know, some, some businesses, they have like their community boards, uh, where people kind of post, you know, like different nanny services and walk, uh, dog walking services and blah, blah, blah. You know, well, have a section there for you where people come in to look at something else and all of a sudden they know that you have something coming up and they better, uh, you know, take it because uh, it's not going to last forever, right? And then uh, uh, finally, but not less importantly, is uh, using a CRM test uh, system to help you get organized, you know, gather information so you can actually, you know, discover shopping patterns. Uh, you can actually, uh, you know, that do some customization and, and be able to segmentate your own already buying customers. Uh, so then based on what they bought before, or what services they consumed before, you can kind of predict what is that they need next. They, they might need, uh, might purchase next, especially if you have a, you know, a complimentary service or a com complimentary product to something they purchased before, or if you have an upgrade, right. And, and, and there, they can be returning customers. So can you imagine how much money they, that would save you if, if you could tap into that. Wrapping things up here, a couple more things. One, loyalty and advocacy. You did all this work. They converted it. Woo! They love your brand. They love what you do. They believe in you and your product, your service. Your team is amazing. You solve their problem. Now what? Are you just going to let them go? Hopefully you have a business where you can get recurring service. Uh, ser they, they can purchase recurring services or products. You know, you sell them good stuff, but can you, can you sell them something else? Well, why not? Right? What if you can help them already if you know their problem? If they know what they already enjoy, why wouldn't you? They will be thankful for that, right? You shouldn't be ashamed of that. So three digital tactics for loyalty and advocacy. One, reviews. Don't be ashamed to ask for reviews from, from your customers. All of them, right? You want to know about your, um, you know, people that hate, you know, those haters that for no reason, they, they're they not going to love you. They're not going to like you and they're going to criticize you. Well, you want to know because there might be chances there for you to improve. How would you know if you don't ask? You gotta make it easier for them to, to give you reviews, you know, on your website, on social media. You gotta ask for it. A lot of people are not. Probably most people will give you a negative review if they have a bad experience and very few people will give you a good review if they got an okay experience. But how many people that had an amazing experience will give you a review? Why not take that to your advantage and use it to advocate for future potential customers? So have a plan for that and make it easy for them. Recognize those people that you know who are your best shoppers, who are your best uh, brand ambassadors, the ones that are talking about you in your groups, the ones that are always uh, giving you a like and, and a thumbs up. It's very hard to get that. So when you have them, why not take advantage of that and, and invest a little bit, recognize them, thank them for it. Do something special for them. Make easy for customers to contact you. They have a problem, but just let them get to you first. Don't let them go to social media to rant about, you know, the bad experience they have. Just have them, you know, first get to you and, and, and act on it, right? You got to have a plan on how you're going to um, uh, manage, uh, you know, both, both, both positive and negative reviews. And they stay in touch, stay in touch, stay in front of mind of your customers, be email, social media, SMS, and helpful content. I'm not talking about spamming, but deliver good, valuable content. Write a list of uh, things. If I would be on the shoes of my customer, what would I want to know? What problems I'm, I would, would I want to know? Think of what are the questions that I'm getting all the time and they're repeating themselves. Put them on your website, like a, a, like a frequent ask question section, create uh, topics about uh, that and your blog videos on YouTube or on social media, create, um, you know, rooms with discussions with people and, and tackle these issues right away. Just like I'm doing uh, here right now. Why, why not? 
why couldn't you do that? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be valuable? Wouldn't they be thankful if they find value to it? If you're helping, helping them overcome some issues, some doubts that they have. So stay in touch. And here's just like a bonus digital marketing must have that I wanted to share with you. One, build a website. You got to have a website, a website. I, I, I believe that most companies have a website, but unfortunately not a hundred percent of them still do. So why don't you invest in a good website, not a, a, a bad website, a cheap website that, and I understand not everybody can afford it. Not everybody has a budget, but at least do your due diligence and do the best you can to actually, you know, do yourself a favor with all this hard work you're putting behind the scenes to have a good face to your customers. 70% of the customers, at least they're going to go to their uh, mobile device to look for you before they even go to your establishment, before they even consider looking for you or trying to, to contact you. They're not going to sign up or an email or anything, maybe unless they find you and, and they know what you're about, what your beliefs are, what your value proposition is, what problem you're solving for them. And then they might want to get in touch with you. So my recommendations, number one, build a good website with all the, uh, uh, characteristics that I described before. So you can go back and, and, and check. Claim your, your site with Google My Business, free tool from Google. Anybody can do it. It's really easy. You just gotta make sure that you fill it out. Uh, you know, you can insert your business hours, your products, uh, you know, where you're located. You have a physical location or not. You can do it. You just gotta follow the instructions and, and then from there, make sure that you keep it up to date. But it's like a super powerful tool. It'll help you. Now they have changed and now you can manage that through like Google Maps kind of consolidated service rather than doing like Google My Business app that they just recently discontinued. And it's something that not everybody's using, that you should be using. It's free. Don't know how to do it. You're not tech savvy. No problem. Talk to somebody, hire somebody to do it for you. They're, that's probably going to be, that's, that's not probably, but that's going to be money well invested for your business because people will be able to discover you right when they need you, right when they're looking for what you have to offer in their area. Create organic social pages. Social media is out there. You don't have to be everywhere. You just have to be where they, your customers are, where your potential customers are. But also you have to make sure that you have a strategy in place, that you have a, a, a marketing calendar so you can deliver in a consistent manner with some sort of a plan. So you have a goal and people know what to do. So it all has to kind of fit in, kind of like a big puzzle. You take a step back and you see how every aspect of it, it does, um, it does make an impact on, on that final, uh, result, which is a purchase or a return customer, return purchase. Set up your SMS and SMS, uh, SMS vendor and your email list. It might cost you money. Yes. Again, talk to professional. You can do it yourself in many cases. When your list grows to a particular size, then you, you might start paying for it. So you want to consider other uh, techniques out there more in depth with uh, email marketing management. Uh, so you can uh, only usually keep those customers that are value to you and eliminate all the spam and all those uh, really emails that don't do anything that never buy and they're not really interested in buying from you. And then uh, for sure, the number five is establish your customer da database. So you can look at, uh, you know, who bought from you, what they bought, what they were their what were their preferences before, like when you had to package something or when you had to deliver a service, what are those things that are unique to that consumer? So if you could keep track of that, it can be as simple and inexpensive as a Google spreadsheets or an Excel sheet, or it can be something as a CRM you know, platform, which it doesn't have to be expensive either. WordPress will do the trick with uh, something like WooCommerce or any other uh, platform or even other plugins that you can add to your Gmail account. So we're not talking about spending a lot of money, but something that is efficient, something that allows you to do more with the data that is available to you so you can create more campaigns that are more um, impactful with your consumers. So whoever is really interested in what you're looking for, they get that information, they get that call to action that it can be different from somebody that is a little bit like a colder lead rather than somebody like ready to purchase. Okay. So, so you got to have an intent and a way to manage that. 
All right, my friends, that's uh, all. I'm sorry uh, it took me five more minutes than I wanted uh, with this uh, presentation, establishing your digital marketing strategy, and I hope it helped. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it, uh, if there you have still some questions, uh, if you, you need to work with an agency, hey, I'm here for you as well. Anyways, uh, if, if, let me know with a like or a thumb up or a little note on, on the comments if this is something that you like me to do, uh, if you see value on it and if you enjoyed it. I definitely had a good time and, you know, I, I really want, uh, to help, uh, you know, as many custom, uh, businesses that are out there, uh, because I think this is a good way for, for helping people and, and sharing some, something that I have a passion for. Take care.